They say the truth hurts, the truth hurts So you about to feel pain, and I gotta do work God said I gotta do work, cause it's off with the name Savage Truth, it's Savage Truth It's the Savage Truth, the Savage Truth Welcome to the Savage Truth. I am your host, Roy Dockery, and welcome back to the Leadership Lab. I'm gonna dive right into it because we're right at the we're at the precipice, we're at the apex. So we're right in the middle of the of the total number of lessons. So this is going to be lesson seven of the Leadership Lab. So in our last video, we talked about authenticity. I hope you took some time to reflect on that and figure out how to hundred how to bring a hundred percent of yourself to work every day. But now we're going to talk about, and again, talking about the apex, right, in the middle. I didn't even do this on purpose. Things happen. But we're going to talk about promotion. So when I'm talking about promotion, I'm talking about when you're at work, there are new opportunities, or you feel like you're you're at a point where you need to move forward in your career, right, as a leader, not just as an individual contributor, but also as a leader. And this also applies to individual contributors. But how do you learn how to make your own future? See, one of the things that I always have to advise my mentees not to do is to not to not get yourself promoted out of a job, right? And, and anyone who's ever heard of it, there's this thing called the Peter Principle, right? Where we keep taking promotions, we keep taking new jobs that are offered to us, and then you wind up in a position of incompetence because you allowed a job or an opportunity or a promotion or the promise of more money to actually pull you out of your purpose. So the one thing I want to say is that don't just look for a promotion. Don't just look for the new manager role, the new director role, a new VP role. When you're looking for growth, you also have to look for personal growth, right? Personal challenge, a personal stretch, but things that lead to a greater purpose and ultimately allow you to have a greater impact, right? One of the one of my sayings or slogans is impact, impress, imprint, right? These shirts are on the website. You can go buy them. Um but I talk about impact because it's not just about having authority. It's not just about having direct reports. It's not just about having bonuses, right? There, there are benefits to being a leader. There are benefits to promotion. It's undoubtable, right? They're, they're financial. They're, um, sometimes you get greater work-life balance. There's stock options. There's all of these things that you can, that you can attain when growing in promotion. Um, but what benefits a man to gain the whole world and then lose your soul, right? Like, what is the point of getting promoted into a job that you hate that now makes you regret eight to 10 hours of your of your living, of your life, right? Eight to 10 hours of your daily existence is now doing something that you do not, you do not like. It's now leading people that you can't connect with. It's now serving a purpose or an organization that you don't align with. So the first thing that we should be thinking about when we talk about trying to get a promotion is, okay, what impact can I have? Right. And is that it is this promotion? Is this new job? Is this new company? Is this new role? Is this new department actually going to help me grow? Because what you don't want to do is become complacent as a leader and stay in the place where it's easy. But what you also don't want to do is step out of your calling. Right. So a lot of people, you know, when they when they talk about work, they talk about careers, they talk about money. Not many people talk about calling. You hear calling in a more religious sense. You hear calling when people talk about a philanthropic work. You, you hear calling normally not associated with work, but I'm here to tell you that people can have a job, they can have a career, or they can have a calling, right? And a calling is that intrinsic pull that is a desire for you to achieve something that you feel like you were made to achieve. There are some people who feel like they were made to preach. There are some people who feel like they were made to be missionaries. There are some people who feel like they were made to serve the homeless. That is a calling, but that doesn't mean those people can't turn that into their work. I'm a servant. I am called to serve people. I am called to lead people. That's why I'm a pastor. That's why I'm a mentor. That's why I'm a life coach. That's why I'm a consultant. And that's why I'm a service executive. All of those things still fall into my calling. So even though I'm doing things that challenge me in different ways, that challenge me spiritually, that challenge me personally, that challenge me professionally, and I've been promoted in all of those spaces, I'm still just pursuing my calling, right? So when you're a leader and you're trying to look for something, you have to understand like you've got you've to weigh in since you're a leader, right? Don't just be someone waiting to give you a promotion. Don't just wait for a job to become available. Because what I've learned in my career is, is more aligned with intrapreneurship 
than just taking the next job that's open. And so in this video, I'll talk about entrepreneurship a little bit just to give you a context and I'll give you my definition, right? I'm going to define things as I talk about them so we're not, we're not having abstract ideas. But entrepreneurship for me is being an entrepreneur but internal to an organization, right? So entrepreneurs are, you know, are innovative. They're taking new ideas. They're developing new products. They're offering new services to the market. But a lot of entrepreneurs, they do it by themselves, right? So they're the marketing department, the sales department, the service department. They're the coders, the developers, the designers, the engineers, the marketing team. They're everything in one because to be an entrepreneur, like you get all of that stuff off the ground by yourself. Intrapreneurship, though, allows you to be an innovator and allows you to be a creator and allows you um, to, to, to launch new products and new services or come up with new ideas, but you have an entire organization that does all the other stuff that you don't like to do. I am an entrepreneur, but I don't want to deal with the human resource aspect of it. I don't want to deal with benefits. I definitely don't want to do the accounting. I'm not that great as mar at marketing. Anyone who knows, I'm a YouTube personality with the podcast who doesn't use social media. That seems contradictory, but I don't like social media and it's a waste of my time. So I just don't want to be on it, right? My time is valuable. I'd rather be pouring into people than abstractly putting captions online. Again, because my calling is to pour into people. So I'm making my time available for that. So therefore, not on social media. Have a Discord channel. You can join it. It's always in the <laughs> description box below. But other than that, you'll find me on LinkedIn where I rarely go because people are always pestering me trying to sell me products because my title says vice president. So with that, intrapreneurship, right? And so when we talk about promotion, another way to get promoted is to be an entrepreneur at work, right? To see a problem, to propose a solution, um, to see a market opportunity and to propose a service, to see a need and fill it. See, too often we're, we're going to our bosses or, you know, when, when you, you know, and a lot of times you think about the people who get promoted, you think about the suck ups, right? You think about the one that goes to the boss and was like, what can I do for you today, boss? How can I help you today, boss? And like, that's how you get promoted. But the problem is, is that as bosses, we don't always know what's wrong. As bosses, we can't always see the forest through the trees, right? Like sometimes we are so focused on our goals, our objectives, our plans, our budget, our, um, our revenue targets that I don't have time to focus on something that you could be seeing so clearly and that you could bring to me and say, hey, I know you're worried about a lot of stuff, but if we do this here, this can really create an opportunity for the company grow. If you do this here, this could really help us with efficiency and drive greater optimization of our resources. If you do this here, this is a product that our customers would really love. I think we could segment the market. We could have a competitive advantage and, and we can be successful. Like if we do those things and we bring those things to the attention of management, you have two things that could potentially happen, right? And it's, and, you know, because I'm going to try to make it simple so we're not here all day. One thing that's going to happen is your boss will take your idea and he will steal it. He or she will steal it, right? They will steal your idea. Option number one. Number two is they will hear the idea, they'll reflect on it, and then they'll share that idea with some other people. And then people be like, that sounds like a great idea. And then they'll come back to you and say, okay, that's a really good idea. How do we do it? How do we execute it? So one thing that's interesting in both of these scenarios is that in both of those scenarios, that leader, that manager, your boss is dependent upon you to be successful executing that idea because it was not his or her idea. So even in the event that they steal your idea, right, which is something in uh, The Art of Worldly Wisdom by Balthasar Gratian, it's like even if someone steals your idea, they can't sustain it. So they still need you. So even if your boss steals your idea and it gets your boss promoted, when your boss is promoted, they have to take you with them. So you still get promoted, <laughs> right? Because now your boss needs to carry you with them because the momentum that they gained was actually based off of something that came out of your brain. So they require your presence. So that's why you'll see people who become vice presidents and then the people who were with them just migrate. They become senior vice presidents and then their director becomes a vice president. They become the CEO and now their, their VPs become C-suite. That's because those people have been feeding that individual ideas that have attributed to their success and they have to keep pulling those people with them. It's not a bad thing. The only problem is it's going to limit your top to one step beneath where your boss is. 
still plenty of growth per promotion. You may never ever want to be your boss. You might not want to be the CEO. Depends on your calling. <clears throat> on the other side, you have the aspect of they come back to you. They present the you know they've presented the idea. They talk to it. People think they're it's a great it's a great concept. It's a great product. It's a great service. Now what you have to be ready for is knowing how to establish your value. Because if they say, that's great, we'll do it, and then they're going to keep your title the same, they're going to pay you the same amount of money, and they're not actually going to compensate you for the value that you're adding to the organization, then you have an institutional problem that you need to address with someone. Because if you're adding value to the company, then the company should be adding value to me, right? One of the most difficult conversations I've had to have is when people feel like they deserve more money, right? They work hard, they think they're doing their job well, and they're like, I think you should be giving me more money. And one thing that I've learned over time is I've always asked the same question. How are you adding more value to me today than you were yesterday, right? Because I was paying you for the work that you did yesterday. I was, I, I, you know, I've given you merit increases. I've given you cost of living increases. Like I'm paying you for the work that you do and I'm paying you and, and in my organizations always equitably compared to everyone else who was here based on your skill, your experience, your geographic location, right? Based on things that allow me to fairly assess the value that you add and basically what you need to maintain your life. So if you just want more money because you were here for another year, if you just want more money because it's been six months, if you just want more money because of time, time doesn't add any value to me. The longer that you've been here, does not matter to me. I'm sorry. I know, you know, I know people with seniority, but this is not a union. This isn't, you know, this isn't like this is a business, right? Like if anything, our customers expect our services to be more valuable and less expensive next year. They expect us to become more efficient. They expect us to be better at what we do. They don't expect the same thing to cost them more. Like we are all upset and frustrated when our when when Netflix goes up randomly and it's not like I got more features but my Netflix has gone from 999 to 2149 for apparently no reason right so like I, I got no value I'm frustrated about that as a customer I understand inflation and things of that nature but if I'm increasing your salary year over year and then people just get to this point to where they feel like they should get more money but the question is always how are you adding more value right so when you're being promoted you have to understand, especially when you're being an entrepreneur, what value you add and how that value should be added back to you, right? Whether that's bonuses, whether that's per percentages, whether that's joint venture agreements, whether like whatever that is, you need to understand the value um, and you need to be able to bring your value to the table and honestly and confidently have that conversation because there's nothing worse than getting promoted and taking a pay cut. There are people who have refused to promote because me putting them in a salaried role would cut their salary when they're non-exempt and eligible for overtime. So I've kept them in that position, increased their salary, and allowed them to work because they traveled in the number of hours that they work, that they will actually have greater compensation not getting a promotion. So don't always jump to the salary job when your salary non-exempt or eligible for overtime because I had to learn that from my first promotion into management. I took a $20,000 pay cut unbeknownst to me and almost lost the house that I was buying. So don't just always take the title and make sure you understand the value that you're going to add. Make sure you understand how it impacts your finances, right? There's a big difference between being a technician or, or somebody that's getting paid by the hour um, and getting overtime and then taking a management job that might have a seasonal or annual bonus but then your weekly, bi-weekly, monthly income goes down because now I don't have that trigger I can pull, right? I can't just add more money into my pocket by doing more work or by, um, by working extra hours or volunteering to do the weekend. So you lose some of your flexibility in being able to drive and control your income when you take a promotion. And if you're in a position in your life where you really need to be able to pull in extra income, sometimes the promotion is not the answer in that space. So don't just look for more money, right? Don't just look for a better title. Look for a way to make greater impact, right? Learn how to make your own future. Control your own future. Tell people, tell your boss, tell your boss's boss what you think you can add to the organization, what you think you can do. Because what most of you don't realize is that all of us know, all of us leaders, or at least good leaders in my opinion, we know that there's something we're missing. We know there's a gap. We know that there's something being overlooked. 
we just don't have time to go through every through, oh, go through every haystack to find that needle. But what we need is people who are in the haystacks and saying, here's the needle. Like, here's the one problem that we could address, or here's the needles that we could address. Here's the holes in our systems. Here's the gaps in our processes. And when those people stand up, we promote those people. Don't promote people who want to be promoted. Promote people who are trying to make an impact. Promote the people who are who are trying to, to, to make a difference. Promote the people who are leading their colleagues and training their colleagues and offering their ideas. I tell people all the time, don't tell me what you want to be. Don't tell me the role that you want in the future. Show me what you're capable of. Because I'd rather promote somebody knowing that they're good at what they claim they're good at, especially when you're talking about internal promotions. If I'm hiring from the outside, I'm rolling the dice, right? I have to assume that you're not lying on your resume, which we know the vast majority of people do. I have to assume that you're not overstating your accomplishments, which most people do. But when it's internal, you're here. I know your, I know your reputation. I've seen your work, right? So if you show me more, wouldn't it just make common sense that I'd be more likely to give you more. Like, don't wait until I'm offering it to show me that you want to be a supervisor. Don't wait until it's being offered to show me that you want to be a manager. Don't wait until it's offered to show me that you want to be in a different role. Tell me before, because then if the only time you talk about these other skills, these other abilities, these other interests is when money is on the table, it seems disingenuous. Because the reason that some of the people get promotions that you all don't think are top performers, that you don't think, and it's because they have told people what they want to do. They mentioned to their manager during the one-on-one or their last performance appraisal, hey, if a supervisor role comes open, I'd really be interested in it. They've mentioned to people in other departments that like, man, I really see what my manager is doing. I wish I could do that someday. You start building a coalition, but what you're really doing is you're advertising your desire to do more but make sure you're advertising something that you're willing to do and that you're willing to demonstrate now instead of waiting until somebody pays you to do it in the future. Because entrepreneurs have to start with nothing, with nothing. And so entrepreneurship is you can start with nothing. But the only problem is, the, I mean, the only benefit is you're getting paid a salary. So if I want to try something new, if I want to put my, my, my finger into project management, if I want to dip my toe into supervision or into leadership, I can do that when I have a job without losing my job. And then if I'm good at it, maybe I get a promotion. If I'm not good at it or I realize that I am good at it, but I don't like it, then I can just stick with my regular job and try something else. So always be willing to step out and do more without someone asking you, because I guarantee you that when an opportunity becomes available or when you inspire an opportunity to be created, like you will get that promotion. So that's my advice for you today. Uh, thank you for joining us here on the Savage Truth in the Leadership Lab. And like you said, we're like I said, we're about to go down the hill. We talked about promotions, and now we're going to talk about transitions and discipline and leaving jobs. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining us. God bless. Peace out.